Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here's the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, from your favorite real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And this is a real treat because today I have a new and improved Duran Frazier from Carlsbad, California, from reserveland.com, landhub.com. You hear the applause. Duran, the big benefit of getting sick is your svelte, your... You're looking good, man. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. I, I honestly, I don't know if it, it's meant to be, but it's meant to be that I'm down seven pounds in a week from overly sweating. I had four nights of the most uncomfortable. I felt like I was laying in a swimming pool. But um, and for those who have had the flu before uh, or a, a high fever and broken it, um, imagine breaking it four days in a row or five days in a row because um, that's what happened. I got a little nervous, you know, day four or five. I was like, hey, is this normal? And, uh, and then the worst. Did you get a flu shot? Just shut up. Are you crazy? You don't get a flu shot. A full conspiracy theorist. Oh, comes- no. For, for sure, the guy who likes to uh, discuss earthclinic.com is not getting a flu shot. Folks, let's be honest with you. They're putting the virus in your body. The likelihood of you getting the flu is about probably, it's probably greater than actually getting, you know, than you being out there talking to somebody and, Getting the germ yourself. So, I'm not so a- most likely you suffered needlessly an extra two or three days because uh, because of your warped medical views. Well, my warp just so just to just to preface that one, my warped medical views come from as we've already discussed a very bad reaction to an antibiotic seven years ago. So, okay. I, as, as mentioned, here's what's crazy. As mentioned, I have not put a single drug in my body, not even a Tylenol. We talked about this. I know it's seven. Six or seven years, I, haven't, I, I can't count right now, but six or seven years. And what's unbelievable is this, I had two days of super high fever. And I, and, but I just, and everybody should know this, but a fever is good for you. A fever is fighting off infection. Right. A fever is not bad. So when people say, you know, give ibuprofen, you know what, to be honest with you, a fever actually is good. It's fighting infection. So by, by giving, taking, uh, you know, Tylenol or uh, acetaminophen or whatever you put in your body, ibuprofen, it's actually hindering maybe the healing process a little bit because you want that fever to break um, and and do what the body's supposed to do. The body's uh, you know wonderfully made and it can handle these infections. So anyway, uh, a couple of days it was nasty. I was in bed I've, and it's I've I've never honestly been hit that hard in my entire life. Um, I couldn't. I, I I'm I'm a guy that usually not a baby and just gets up and gets it. I couldn't move, dude. I was in bed for two days straight. Well, I know, I, you know, it's funny about that is because I had another friend who got the flu really badly and, uh, and her husband is a doctor and he was explained, explained to me there's drift and there's shift. So China gets the flu like eight months before us. And that's how we know how to make these, uh, flu shots. Right. So we analyze the virus from China. It comes to us seven, eight months later, and that's called drift. It just drifts over here. Well, what happens is with the flu or all viruses is this one, if it's a different strain, it's called a shift. And then there's no fighting it. We don't have any answer for it. And then, you know, we just have to hopefully hope that it drifts back to us. And then we had enough time to make a uh, a flu shot or a, yeah, a flu shot. But since you're never going to get a flu shot, it really doesn't apply to you at all. Yeah. I'm, I, you know what? My body's, like I said, wonderfully made. It can beat these things. I did do a lot of probiotics, a lot of uh, raw apple cider vinegar, which we've talked about in the past. Right. Uh, I drank uh, lemon lemon juice um, every day. Lemon, just pure organic lemon juice and water every day. Lots and lots and lots of uh, of water. Um, and I, you know, I, literally when the when the when the first, when I when I first broke the fever the third day, I was back. I mean, I was like back to myself. Although I kind of had some congestion and and that was my worry, but. I'll tell you, most of the time when I get sick, Mark, I, my congestion will turn into, you know, green. You know how it is. The phlegm turns green. You get a conge- right, you know, right, get an infection in your lungs and respiratory issues. And I didn't, what's weird is I never had any, I had the respiratory issues for, you know, just when, when things started, 
And then after day three or four, they were gone. I didn't have any infection down in my respiratory system. So I must have just done the right smart things. I didn't eat any sugars. I mean, sugar is obviously the devil when it comes to these infections. So, uh, so yeah, so it was, uh, well, look, look, I'm, I'm glad you're healthy. I'm glad you're back on the mend, but as much as everyone wants to hear about our maladies, we got to talk about making money in raw land. You, You know what? You are so selfish here. I am just want to talk about life and being happy and being healthy. And all you want to talk about is money. I, I'm look. This is respecting our audience. Do you think our audience cares about money? I don't they think. Care about their, I, I think they, they care about health, accumulating two, wealth. Number three is finances. Oh, wait, say that again. Health, family, finances. Health, family, finances. Fine. Okay. How How are the kids? They're awesome. How are your kids? How's Lauren? They're great. They're great. Good. Okay. Yeah. Now back to, back to money. Back to money. Okay. Finances. So. Um, we had a gold mastermind session. You were too sick to attend, but we, you know, we kind of got into the detail of this, but I want to get your pers- perspective on it. What do you think of the legalization of marijuana and how do you think it'll affect uh, the micro economies where in the States where they are legalizing it and the macro economy as a whole? It's a tough one, Mark. It's uh, it's interesting because I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not a big proponent of drugs in general. I know you are. I know <laughs> I, okay. That's nice. I'm not at all. <laughs> no, I'm uh, look, it, it, it's a, it's a very interesting subject. I, from a, from a economic standpoint, it's, it's very, it's even more unique, but you know, we talked j- briefly about the macro, the macro impact. And there are some, there are some interesting, you know, things that could pop up, especially, you know, we talk, as we talk about land and, and sort of how they, how the two interact with each other. And, and you and I won't answer those questions, but, there will obviously be a higher demand for land, right? Um, especially land that, and soil that's good to grow marijuana. I, I don't have any, I don't have the slightest clue of how marijuana is grown. Um, you know, it's, it's, Duran, it's a plant. I understand that. But I in, in some it, places it's, it just grows wild. Yes, but um, sure it does. Um, but, uh, what, what you don't, don't, no, yeah, I know it, it just grows wild everywhere. Officer, <laughs> officer, I don't know how those got there. They yeah. Just, growing in my closet it was like it's like a weed it's, i don't know how, what happened um those lights i don't know where they came from either um so um no i, I understand it's a, it's a plant but i but but it, they do i'm sure genetically modify these plants right to, to do different things so that they grow a different way for different reasons and you know I, and then what's you know then you go into the uh, i just was just listening on the news the other day talking about how they've got 50 types of products now that they're sort of integrating with, with marijuana, whether it's, what do you mean? Like, like, hemp, like hemp stuff? And, what's that? No, like gluten-free goods to eat and uh, to all these different foods. And uh, I mean, just crazy stuff. I, I, you know, next thing you know, they'll be feeding your dog, you know, pot brownies. I don't know what they've got going on, but, but you, do, but you don't have an issue with it ethically. You would invest in it. No, you, you would be fine having financial gain from it. No, I wouldn't. I'm not saying you're going to be a dispensary. That's not true. No, I won't. You have an ethical issue with it. 100%. Really? 100%. And I'll tell you why. All right, we're going we're to argue about this, but let's, let's, let me hear what you, let me hear your argument. We're not going to argue. And I'll tell you why. It's simple because for me, it's, it, there's, there's a couple of things that I always made a promise or a pact with myself when I was younger that I wouldn't get involved with. One was alcohol and two is drugs. Okay. Anything. But that, that's not, and, what, no, that's, okay, sorry, that's different though. You're not getting involved in it. And three is gambling or make financial gain from it. <laughs> yeah. You were 13 years old. And you said, I'm not going to make financial gain. I wasn't. I was, I was 20 years old sitting in a hospital bed, surviving something very silly of me. Something happened to me. And I told myself, I will never again touch it or be involved with it. I want to hear the story. No, nope. real quickly. Two minute, the two minute version. Okay. Okay. Two minutes. Uh, got sick one night. Got super sick. Uh, I was in going back. I've, I've always had kind of weak lungs as a kid. I had really bad asthma growing up. Um, uh, 18, 19 years or 20 years old. I'm, I'm working at a restaurant with a guy. Um, I'm feeling terrible. He goes, come to my house and I live in San Diego. So I'm close to Mexico. This gentleman, uh, was in Mexico quite a bit. He was, you know, I think his half his family lived in, um, Tijuana and other half lived in San Diego. He goes, Hey, I got some antibiotics at my house. Go to his house. Take, he gives me an antibiotic. I take an antibiotic and then, um, I, then he gave me a puff of something that I inhaled, which I was not a big 
person and I didn't smoke very much, but I was feeling so disgust, you know, so bad and disgusting that I thought well, maybe a maybe a puff of his uh, his reefer would would help me solve some of these health problems. Right. Well, lo and behold, it was laced with something that I don't know what it was laced with. Um, I'm driving home and I pass out, and the guy Whoa. the guy behind me in in uh, on the road takes me to the hospital, which is right around the corner. So now I'm in the hospital. I'm 20 years old. And as I'm, as I'm coming, as I'm, as I'm going out and as I'm coming to, and I'm in the hospital, I basically made it, made a pact that, Hey God, if I survive this, I promise I will never touch any drugs and I will not, and I will never, you know, and, and I will never financially benefit at any level from drugs or gambling or, or alcohol, which I, I've literally made that a pact since I was a 20 year old. And then, and I've never gone back. in. so it's more of a, it's a more of a personal ethical issue. Um, and for me, like, I, I'm not going to argue with, with like, you as to what why I believe that way. It's just because something happened in my life, and that's why I'm. I'm no, 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 I'm not. I'm not going to argue with you and say, yeah. "Oh, you should change your view." I'm yeah. just. Gonna, I'm just going to make the counter argument that I think as long as you're not hurting someone else and you're an adult, yeah, you're over eighteen, yeah, I don't have an ethical issue with it, right? But how so many it, kids under eighteen are going to take are are, are going, to, going to at some level try to buy marijuana from? What, something that you're involved with. Yeah, I mean, but you can make that argument about cigarettes, which are legal, about yeah. alcohol, which is legal. And, and, and I don't get involved in any of that stuff. So. Right, exactly. So, you, you know, the, the slippery slope argument doesn't really apply, I yeah. think. And now, you know, you can take it to the furthest extent and say, well, why not just legalize all drugs? Well, you know, it's clinically proven that marijuana is really bad for your lungs, but in moderation, it is not addictive. Um, you know, you don't hear about people going out smoking pot and killing people. Methamphetamine, you do. Cocaine, yeah. people have heart attacks. Um, you know, these Schedule One drugs are really, really bad for you in society. And you can't necessarily make that strong argument for marijuana. And plus, there's medicinal uses for it. So there's a lot of, you know, you can make a, a, a fairly convincing case that the plant isn't so bad for you and so bad for society. And if people can, you know, profit from it as a whole and no one's getting hurt, you know, why not? Look, alcohol is legal. So I, I don't know how many deaths there are that are alcohol related, but I know it's a, you know, marijuana related deaths are a fraction of it. So I don't, I don't necessarily have an ethical issue with it. No, that, but that's but that, you know, now that's a macro level. Now, from a micro level, would I ever smoke pot for my children? No. Would I ever tell my children this is okay to do? It's healthy for you? No. For the Podolsky family, this is off the table. And you know, I'm going to teach my children from a very young age: don't do any drug. Why do you need to do drugs? Do you do you do you do drugs? Do you you said not in front of your children? I'm getting nervous, dude. No, no, I'm saying, but I'm saying, I'm you know, it's, if it was legal, I wouldn't do it. It's your rabbi's phone number. Can yeah, I, I, you know what? I, I don't drink in front of my children either. I just don't. I, as a as a role model, I, I don't. I personally, and I don't look. And if you drink in front of your kids, I'm not judging you because you're an adult. And you know, <laughs> if you can do anything responsibly, I'm fine with it. I personally, you know, I take a very rigid view of it. So I don't think I'm right. I just think that's what I do. And it's my choice, and you know, yeah. So whatever. Uh, but, I mean, but, but what okay, trying, but, but what I, trying to say, hold on. What you're trying to say right now is that you are an opportunist. You no, will... no, 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 not an opportunist. I'm, I'm look. We're in business, right? And we're looking at this from our land business, and that's it. And look, if you want to call me an opportunist because I see an opportunity in states where they legally can grow marijuana, and I can say, look. All ships ride. Uh, all ships uh, ride with the tide, right? And so, if these states and their economies are going to boom, and I can own land there, and that land is also going to go up in prices, right? Let's go do with it. I mean, let's let's take San Francisco as an example. The San Francisco real estate market, Silicon Valley comes in, all these instant millionaires. What happens to the housing? San Francisco, you could argue, is unaffordable because you've got all these twenty-something multimillionaires. And they're just bidding up the housing market. Intrinsically, you know what I'm saying? These houses in any other part of the country would be two, three hundred thousand dollar houses. In San Francisco, they're a million, million two, million three. So that's all I'm saying. 
our land in these states might intrinsically only be worth you know a fraction of the value but again if all ships rise ride with the tide and there's all these instant millionaires in those states and they look they need to put their money somewhere and we all know real estate and land are great investments inevitably the prices are going to rise in those areas and from a macro level it's just going to everyone's going to benefit from it right i do better financially i buy your product or service now you do better financially agreed agreed so from that aspect that's that's how i feel about it and i resent you calling me an opportunist it's okay <laughs> that's that's how i introduce when people say what do you so what what's your title what do you do for work i said i'm a professional opportunist you're prof yeah um no we, we um look mark you and i are very similar but let me ask um, you would you would you start as a strategy right now implementing that and, and looking in those areas and start investing or you're just gonna because you're just not you're just gonna be like well look i'm doing what i'm doing i'm not adjusting for this because look it could be a, a total boom bust scenario and we can discuss that next yeah no i agree mark and i think the i mean if you, if you go if you go back to it i mean if everyone starts growing weed on their property in theory does it actually necessarily impact land as a whole or people wanting to go buy land well maybe uh, absolutely because you have an asset absolutely this asset is an income producing asset now you're not just putting a house on there you're putting an asset which is marijuana that people can go and sell and make money so yeah absolutely just like if i if i had agricultural land in nevada uh or a solar farm in nevada <laughs> that that land becomes much higher in value the okay. highest and best use okay so so let's let's go let's go let's go back okay so interesting interesting thing here okay so everyone starts growing weed on their property right and we know that weed has a particular price, but but just like anything else, um, supply and demand drives prices up or down. Well, if everyone's growing weed, in theory, in theory, the price of weed is basically worthless or you know very cheap because everyone owns land, everyone owns land, and everyone's going to be growing growing weed. So I, just to me, at some level, I, I believe like the thought of of there being sort of a you know the asset. Um, you know, the, the income producing land, um, you know, I just, I don't know. I just have a, have a, have a suspicion that, that there's not going to be, a, it's not going to totally change the market in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. And there's, there's a huge risk with it, risk with, with it right now. If you want to borrow money to set up one of these shops, like a, a dispensary in one of these, uh, cities, the, the interest rate is like 20 to 30% because of the high risk. And the risk is that the federal government, the federal government, is still, still saying, look, this is a Schedule One drug. This is illegal, right? We had a we have a federal state issue going on here. Now, our current administration, I believe, is taking the uh, the view that uh, look, we're we're gonna we're gonna look the other way right now. We have we have bigger fish to fry than you, small time, you know, pot smokers, right? Yeah. What's what could happen? What I see as being the bigger risk. For the market is Merck, Amgen, Genentech, um, you know, bigger companies coming in, the tobacco companies coming in saying, look, we have billions of dollars. We're going to do this in a way where it's going to be much more efficient. We're going to take, take advantage of economies of scale. And all you little guys, see ya. Let the government tax us. It's fine. And in that scenario, um, yeah, if you're involved in those companies and you own those companies' stocks, yeah, you're going to benefit from it. But generally, from a macroeconomic perspective, I don't know if it's going to have as much of a broad uh, impact as it otherwise would. Although, you know, look, a multi-billion dollar new market, it's going to impact everybody, don't you think? But I think if you, if you make a big bet to do it yourself, that's a big risk. What, what do you think? Yeah, you know, well, and while I'm talking to you, I'm actually buying the new domain weedmart.com. Okay, uh, of course you are. Ninety nine cents. I thought I thought Walmart weedmart. I mean, it just only makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, so we'll see. That I think that would definitely be. Um, let's see. I'm just actually funny enough. I'm checking. No, there's not even. That's how. That's how. You know what? If you want to talk about an exploited domain name, 
that's that all those domains have been taken for 15 years because people have been expecting this to happen. Um, yeah, but yeah, you know what though? Honestly, I'm gonna give you a compliment. I love the way you're thinking. Yeah, no, like, I'm, you're, yeah, you're like, like it's just great. Like, I don't think, oh, you know what? I should, I should lock up a, do, a cool domain name and sell it for 100 grand. Yeah, yeah, um, that's really being what, an opportunist. Yeah, what that's and but so no, I again, I just. You know, Mark, it's, it's, again, it's an interesting topic, interesting subject, but you're right. You know, the big boys could step in. I mean, anything could happen. Anything could change the market. Like you said, you, you, you know, you get a Fortune 500 company with, with more money than they know what to do with to back to back an idea like this. And, and those guys are, those guys are real opportunists, right? Those guys are the ones that come in and go, they see it. They seize a billion dollar opportunity. Where, right, right. Like you, like, you know, a small guy takes all the risk. Yep. And then they say, okay, these guys are doing well. Bye-bye. We're going to enter. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, but uh, yeah, I mean, look, I, you know, man, it's, it's such a, I mean, it's such a hard question, you know, to pose to me now too. Like, would I, would I, go, would I go secure land? If somebody goes, Hey, you know, Duran, you have the ability to go make a, a million bucks this year by, by grabbing land in an area that's prime for marijuana production and growth. Um, I, you know, uh, it's a tough one, dude, because I do know there's medicinal purposes for it. I do know that if anybody should be smoking weed, it's probably me because I've got so much stinking energy. But <laughs> uh, my friends always go, you know, it's really funny, Jaren. You're 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 one of the few guys I think that she actually should be smoking weed. But uh, anyway, no, I I, uh, I I think there are a lot of positives, but at the same time, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if the the, the negatives <clears throat> outweigh the positives. I will say, I will say from a uh, from a standpoint of um, you know policing and everything else that we're doing focused on marijuana it's ridiculous i mean focus on on the drugs that that are a lot more harmful to yeah society. i mean i think the decriminalizing of marijuana is a, a very good thing for society yeah yeah so, absolutely so you know i you know i think that the time came and and again I, you know it'd be interesting now to see where what are the best climates right like i think i think colorado and washington are good climates to grow marijuana as well correct correct and, and we actually talked about it in detail how we're actually going to implement strategies in those states yeah. um, to really, you know, there are certain counties, there are certain areas that are better than others. Um, and there's, there's definitely um, ways to do that. So if you want to, you know, learn more about how to do that, go to the gold mastermind um, on www.thelandgeek.com. This is a shameless plug, by the way, for people to go in and enroll in the uh, gold mastermind program, because, you know, there's four or five of us each week that do talk about this stuff, but in more detail than what we do in the podcast. So that's really getting into the nitty, nitty gritty of it and, uh, and getting support. So, all right, my shameless plug is done for the mastermind. Uh, but yeah, I mean, those are the two states right now. Um, there are other states that we could be tracking as well where ballots are um, in process and there's websites where you can track all that. And look, you know, it may not be a bad idea to start, start speculating in those areas and, you know, gauging the political climate. Um, again, you know, it's two, three minutes of research on the web, finding out where it is. Because look, Wayne Gretzky, don't skate to where the puck is, skate to where the puck is going to be. Right? That's deep. That's deep. Wayne, Wayne Gretzky is, is a deep. Yeah. Man. Yeah. We went, we, yeah. You're welcome. His daughter, his, his daughter she's not. Well, never mind. We won't talk about her. Um, you, I just saw she was. Have you seen her on the on the? She's all over the internet these days. Oh, I don't, I don't know anything about it. No. Oh, it's just it's just every time I turn on the internet, it seems like I I hear more about Wayne Gretzky's daughter than I do with Wayne Gretzky. Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm pop culture like death. Uh, okay. I, I have no idea what's going on. That's funny. Anyway, um, no, I agree. I hundred percent agree with you that that uh, if you're looking for a potential opportunity, that this would be from a land perspective. You know, I think they had the. Um, what was that? There was a, there was a, there was a, there was a tree called the Jutropha tree that about 12 years ago, it became kind of like the biofuel um, topic because you could basically grow Jutropha trees in any type of climate. Right. And Jutropha produces some sort of bio. I, I don't even know exactly what it is, but something that can be used for, uh, for powering a lot of different things. So, so, uh, so I had several phone calls, several phone calls from people looking to buy land for to plant Jutropha trees in Nevada. And uh, and I thought, gosh, well, what, a, what an interesting niche. So I went, I went and looked at some research and it just never got to where, you know, it, it took off um, because bi biofuels just never did. Um, right. You know, and, and will marijuana, will, 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 you know, will, will we get to a place where it does become 
popular enough to change the land industry, right? It's, it's hard to gauge. Right. You know, you know, it's interesting. I have a, a deal on my desk now I'm doing the due diligence on, um, and, uh, it's in Northern Arizona, but what's interesting about that area is the, the, uh, it had a huge boom. Then it had the bust in 2008, but all these companies came in and started putting in solar farms. So it's right in the middle of all these solar farms. And, uh, and my seller is really desperate. I mean, I, you know, really buying it 10, 15 cents on the dollar. Right. Uh -huh. Um, so it's a great price, but the story is really, was really compelling because of what's going on around the area. So it's, it's a 70 lot deal and it's really nice looking deal, but I like the, the area and the solar farm play of it more than I do the actual, uh, lots themselves. What do you think of that? Uh, I think it's interesting that you haven't called me about that deal since you know, you I know, know that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm doing that deal than anyone, you know, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. I look, I can't, I can't give you every deal. Oh, I don't want the deal. I just want to, I just want to give you some advice on how to, how to deal with the, uh, with utility companies on, on potentially making that a, uh, something that you could, you could, in fact, just, just, yeah, I mean, it literally came on my desk yesterday. So it's not like I've been sitting on this thing for a week. You make it sound like that. I'm just kidding. Anyway. Um, so yeah, no, that's, uh, that's interesting, but yeah, you're right. Again, those are, those are situations where, you know, solar, you know, I'm, as, as mentioned to you, I'm, I'm working on a solar project on and off for the last four years. Um, in an area where we expect the growth to happen, but there's so many variables involved, and one what, happens. What, what are what are the two main variables or three main variables of that project? Yeah, well, just in, in solar in general, like what what's what are the risk factors? Well, well, first off, your risk factor is the utility. So you have to get you have to get what's called a PPA, which is a power purchase agreement. So a PPA is your number one risk factor. So, so securing a PPA from a utility is what you what you have what you, what your end result is, which allows your project to be sold. I see. Because the PPA is what basically is a handwritten contract that states that you have the ability to sell the power to a to the power company. Which oh, I see. Okay. Um, that that that's number one. Number two is um, that you're going to need you're, you're going to need power and infrastructure somewhere around the property, right? Um, you may have property and there's no power 12, 50 miles away. There's power 12 miles away. Well, you, if you've got power within a mile or two of the property, because it's about to run high, um, to, to run those high voltage lines is somewhere around a million bucks a mile. Okay. Uh, so you're spending a lot of money in the grand scheme of things, depending on how much land is there. Um, just, you know, for, for reference, a 640 acre piece of land can generate um, a flat piece of land can generate between 90 and a and hundred megawatts on the side currently on that size of a property that large. How much is that? Is that a lot? That's a lot. That is a lot. Okay. It's a lot. Like that, you, a project in that range uh, 90, would probably be like top 20 projects or 30 projects in the U S. Um, okay. I'm, so, I'm, I'm getting bleary eyed. This, this is getting too complicated. It's, it's not very complicating. I mean, it, at the end of the day, you, you need power, uh, an infrastructure. Um, you need you need a relationship with the utility company to build that PPA, and then of course you need ground control. So you need to you know you need to make sure that you own the land. You have the ability to to you know to produce solar. Right. Um, so, so so that's a planning and zoning issue, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. So, so I'll I'll look into it. All right. We're getting we're getting short on time here. Okay. Time for that special time of the podcast. Time to put Duran on the spot. No, there's no sound effects for this. Oh, dude, I'm I'm still I'm actually looking while you're saying it. I'm looking for my tip of the day. Oh, it's tip of the week. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I gotta get that right. I gotta get that right. Okay. Tip what of, What's your tip of the week? Okay. Well, my tip of the week is I'm a very big proponent of commodities, as you all know. Um, we've talked about gold and silver. Mark, Mark does it easy. Mark just frowned when I said that. I did not frown. I'm I'm actually having a, a lunch meeting next week with a uh, gold and silver broker. Uh, and we're going to network together That's because awesome. people that buy land buy, also buy gold and silver and people buy correct. gold and silver also, also buy land. Correct. So um, I am uh, one of my favorite sites is a website called kitco.com. K I what's that? Kitco K I T C O. Dot com. Yep. And Kitco basically the site gives you all the information you know about precious metals. Um, it's one of my favorite websites. I go to it every day. Gold is up 20 bucks an ounce today. Uh, as you all know, I'm involved in a mining project 
which I am flying up to Vancouver, Canada next week uh, to work on. So, um, so that's what I, uh, what I go to to get all my updated information. There's a lot of different things you can find there, um, even, you know, events. Um, but has, hasn't gold taken a hit overall for, the, for, the, for 2013? Yeah, gold to me. If you would ask me, and I'm, I'm not an advisor, so don't listen to me. But but listen to me. Um, <laughs> gold, gold mining and exploration companies, and the right ones, it it would be a, a monumental time to buy. Okay, I'm um, I'm gonna put a disclaimer in there. Please. Dran does not know anything. He is, does not have any. He's not registered. Yep. To give advice. Nope. So if not you if you based on that one sentence he just said to to go out and do, and you lose money. Don't come to us. Yeah, don't come to us. I'm just saying, I will tell you, I bought silver at $9 an ounce, um, which a while back, which was a good time. To, I mean, gold, I mean, silver at one point went up to 45 or 50 bucks an ounce. I don't remember the number. But um, anyway, there, there, it's to me, it seems like a great time to buy. I don't know if it's true or not, but, um, you know, follow Kitco. Look at the, look at the metals. You know, I'm not a big chart guy. I'm a, I'm just a, I'm just a proponent of knowing that. If the Fed spent eighty five billion dollars a month, uh, eventually uh, inflation is uh, is lurking. So, yeah, yeah, and and gold's a great hedge, as is land. Yeah, against inflation. Exactly. So, um, that's why there's that nice little uh, symbiosis, if you will, for uh, for us land guys to start talking to these gold and silver guys. Diversify your portfolio. You can't grow gold and silver on your property. That's the only negative. That is a negative. You could find it on your property, though. That is true. Yeah. So That's bring awesome. bring your metal detector. Exactly. But you do have to own the mineral rights. No, you don't. You don't have to own the mineral rights. You, well, you own the surface rights, but if you go underneath. No. Okay. Well, let's talk about this real quick. Plaster and load. Plaster is the top above, generally speaking, above the bedrock. Now, again, I'm, I'll preface with that I'm not a miner, but uh, basically plaster ground is the ground above the bedrock. So if you're digging and you got, you know, 50 or 100 feet before you hit the, the bedrock, that's your ground. So anything in the placer that you find is 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 yours to keep. Yeah, but how? Yeah, but typically speaking, you're not going to find it fifty to hundred feet. But you are. If you look at if you look at, there are some places where, and in Nevada, there are places where you could dig and find. I mean, you're not going to find big, you know, big chunks of gold, but you're going to find. You can find gold. I've I've been gold panning up there, Mark. I found gold on land. Really? How? What? What was the market value of what you found? Um, about 13 cents, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The, the fact is you can find gold in the dirt that you're of your, of your property. It's just, you know, not, it's not going to be a big deal. You're, you're not going to find anything. that's going to be, you know, real income producing gold land, but, um, there are places and you can get lucky. There are places and areas where you could find gold in your, in your plaster ground. Right. Okay. I I've got a great tip for this week. <laughs> Thank you for your tip, by the way. You're welcome. And you know, in, in the land business, especially in our marketing, we want to add value to our customers, right? And one of the great ways today to add value is to give people something of value and teach them something they didn't know. And one of the great ways to do this is to create a, a screencast. Now, I own a Mac software product that's like $150 called ScreenFlow. But I just found this new site called screener.com, S-C-R. E E N R dot com instant screencasts. Just click and record and it's free. The basic program is free. There's nothing to install or download. You can record on your Mac or PC plays everywhere, even on iPhones and you can start with it completely free. So check out screener.com and start making some screencasts and giving your customers uh, some marketing value there. Um, Duran, are we good? Anything else to discuss? Dude. All right. I thought this was a good podcast. How do you feel about it? Uh, good. In fact, you made me divulge the fact that I actually inhaled it at one point in my life. Hey, look, I, you know, I like the fact that you're willing to be authentic and share that with us. Um, I, I lied. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Duran, I appreciate it. Look, if you want to learn more, go to www.thelandgeek.com. Subscribe for free and get uh, all the goodies, the podcast delivered each week to your inbox, get the passive income blueprint, learn how to avoid the three fatal land buying mistakes I see investors making every day, 
And if you want to buy some wholesale land, give Duran some love. Okay, go to reserveland.com. If you're listing your property, give Duran some more love. Go to landhub.com. And look, if Duran doesn't have anything you want, check out my site, frontierpropertiesusa.com, and invest in some wholesale land. Uh, this is Mark Podolsky with Duran Frazier saying make it a extraordinary week, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.